Um, well, good morning. Great to see everybody here. My word. So you know, this is a record. We've never had 100 people here, owners, before. Um, we, we, had, we had a couple of hundred when we had that um, open day in, in the early autumn. Um, uh, part, of, part of racing week. I don't know if anybody got involved with that. Um, anyway, the great sadness is, is that you're coming to see a horse that is not going to be on the gallops. But um, uh, what's going to be really interesting is that um, uh, the vet's come here and he's going to have another look at it today. So um, uh, it'd be quite interesting for all of us to be um, part of that, see what he's doing, and then he can tell us what's going on. I'm afraid he's not as pure white as the driven snow because they, they go out in the field every day, even though he's got a sore foot, he's still doing that. Um, and uh, very red Herefordshire soil um, gives him a sort of pink look to his coat. Anyway, I'm sure you all saw um, what he's done so far. Um, he was running a really nice race at, at Lingfield. Um, I think it would, would have been a solid third, um, but uh, came to grief. Um, uh, we a bit worried for a moment because, you know, he lay down for a bit, but I think he was just trying to catch his breath and have a breather. So big relief when he got to his feet. Okay, this is um, veterinary surgeon Andrew Harrison. Good morning. And um, um, you don't want to see, you don't want to see people like me, okay? Because <laughs> you're, you're you end up with a searing pain in your wallet. If that happens. <laughs> okay, head down, landing left, landing left, landing left. Okay. Four the nose are quite easy to pick up in that respect, that's the easiest way of doing it. And it's really useful to have a good handler just to let them have their head, because if you're keeping hold of their head, then you don't know how much your head knock. And I would grade, lamers we grade them from naught to 10 out of 10, where naught is uh, completely sound and 10 is, is non wet Would you mind going again, please? Is that okay? Yeah. And you think, I see as well there, when he turns, and he turns towards that leg, when you, when you load, uh, when you put the affected leg on the path, and that's often a good indication as well. If there's a foot problem there, you find a lot of horses, uh, if it's something higher up, they don't tend to be too bad, but when you when you turn a horse with a foot lame, you turn it on that foot, they're really quite painful on that. And if they are lame unexpectedly, you always hope it's a foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All lames is, in my experience, they're in the foot until proven otherwise. Yeah, he's not bad, and he's, he's a bit better than he was. So, I mean, the first thing here is what, what you do is check for a pulse. So you, the, the blood vessels to the foot, you, they go down either side, uh, either at the, level, at the level of the fetlock or down below the pastern. And I can feel with him, he's got a really, what I call a bounding pulse. I don't know if any of you want to have a feel, but on this side you can feel... I think we've got 100 people feeling for his pulse. I don't think it's a good plan. <laughs> so reds do not have the best feet in the world. His are not bad, actually. You tend to find the thoroughbreds, he had to have quite collapsed heels. I think we call that a positive response. <laughs> Even the peacock agrees. And, and tell me, <laughs> yeah. is this better than Monday? Yes. It is? Yes, okay. he, is, he is improving. Uh, what we're going to do now is, is next lot's going to pull out. Um, this is Royal Pagai and Jerry, so he's pulling out this lot. So if you can sort of move back onto the lawn, um, and uh, we're going to walk up to the gallops. Um, jo John will be the Pied Piper, so if you can fo follow John. And we'll try and keep everybody together because we don't want random people frightening the horses. Okay. Tail nicely brushed out for you. <laughs> This is Royal Pagai, and he's, he's obviously having a good close look at you. This is Brave Siska, he's having a close look. This is Shambard, he's having a look at you as well. Eyes oh, out of, on his stalks. No, that's not, that's Funimble Civila. Uh, that's Lon Pressy, we've got all the stars out today. Uh, that's a new horse, um, unraced here, Tashil. Uh, Bellatrixa. Uh, Green Book ran at um, Haydock the other day, um, di didn't run so well. Um, prior to that he won a um, big handicap hurdle at Sandown. So the ones that are coming up quicker, we've got um, Brave Siska, um, he's got an entry in the Arkle 
and in the Grand Annual we've got Roy Pagai who's just got the one entry in the Gold Cup, we've got Lon Presse, uh, he's got a couple of entries in the two and a half and the three novice chases, uh, we've got Funambul Sivilla um, who's got an entry in the champion chase and Ashiel who's in the Ida on Saturday. Um, I've also just entered him today in the Midlands National. So those will be coming up um, just the once now and then there's um, a few others coming up a bit steadier and there's just the two that will be coming up um, another time afterwards. Uh, this is Brave Siska written by Ned Fox, our conditional jockey. Um, and that is Funeral Ball Civila, written by Kerry, who looks after and rides him all the time. This is Lon Presse, written by Patrick. So these are just having one, one canter. Um, uh, this is a new horse I bought from France quite recently for a new owner. He's rather exciting. He's not big, but we like him. Um, that's Christopher Wood, who ran a super race at Ascot for us, first run after coming from Paul Nichols. That's Chambard, that's Achille, um, and that's Bella Trixer, who runs again on Friday. Confidence is the most important thing for both horse and jockey, and uh, if the horse needs more schooling for his confidence, then it's very important to do plenty of it. Um, but some of them just don't respect them enough, you know, and... and uh, the more you school them, the less they respect them. So would Tokyo have a, a pop after having had a fall? He will, yes. Yeah, for, for confidence purposes, exactly. Which horse are you most excited about? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> any, any one of that half dozen lot that just went out there. Do you watch? <laughs> do you watch the races? Of course. <laughs> Not everybody does, do they? Some people don't. Some people can't. <laughs> <laughs> Search me, I can't understand that. <laughs> if you can't watch your horses race, you might as well go and do something else. <laughs> you have a bet yourself. <laughs> this whole project is a big gamble. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to throw any more shillings at it. <laughs> End of the day, if, if my horses do well, you know, I'm thrilled. I can't enhance it by going to the bookies and drawing a few quid. And if they run badly, what do I want to throw another 50 quid at it as well? <laughs> Jerry, I thought you'd be used to crowds by now. Finding you all a bit scary, I'm <laughs> Yeah, it's Roy Pagai, Brave Siska, Funable Civila, and that is Christopher Wood and Lon Presse. Hopefully, all will be at Cheltenham. Uh, one, two, probably three grade one contestants there, I'd say. Oh, oil guide, that's a big, big fancy for the Gold Cup. Well, it, a lot will depend on the weather. I think, it, you know, if we've got soft ground, I think, you know, he, he'll have his chance. If it's... Yeah, I, th I think his, his run in the Demon, I think, was actually as, as good as he's ever run. You know, I think, you know, on figures you can get excited by winning handicaps, you know, but and, and the handicapper will put his mark up again. But there's no comparison really with, you know, handicaps to grade ones. And that's why I run so many of my good horses in the handicaps, because actually you're running for better prizes and you've got a better chance. This is Shambard, who's invariably smiling at everybody. <laughs> Ashiel, Anthony, who's been here as long as me, <laughs> and Bellatrix are at the back. <laughs>